Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today we are here uh, with uh, Paul Nessa. And Paul is a world famous automotive artist and sculptor, and he's selling this beautiful SS100 replica that he has. So um, you know the 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 SS100 has a has a long history. It's a, it's a Jaguar car, uh, but before Jaguar became right. Jaguar. So what did the SS stand for? Uh, well, it was swallow sidecar to begin with, and he built sidecars for motorcycles. And they yet Lord Lyon had a sense of style. William Lyon at the time, he had a real sense of style, and. So he did well with the sidecars. Then the Austin, uh, the little tiny, sort of the equivalent of the Model A or, uh, in England. Right. He did uh, custom bodies for those. Okay. So then it was uh, Swallow something or other, and they Swallow did Swallow Motors Limited, I think, is what it came. Okay. And then, uh, then it became... What? What does it say here? Yeah. SS Cars Limited. And that was the way it, it was from, I don't know what the first year was. I think for these it was uh, 35. 36, 36 but, for 35. And it may have been when he started uh, with his saloon cars as well, because I don't know of a car that's earlier than approximately that. Right. And they ran up to about, what, 39? When they produced yeah, these, right? Ms. War ended things. The party was over, right? And they had already run into a problem with the SS. The logos are on every surface around the car, on the wheel nuts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And since that was a real problem, uh, that's when he took the name Jaguar. And that was 1945, I believe. No, he took was the name. Earlier? He started. This is a 38. And that's when he that's started, when started using it. Yeah, so and 38 was the first year that the Jaguar Leaper was uh, in, the, uh, in the catalog that you could buy. Uh, let's let's uh, talk about the, just the mechanics of the car itself. So the body sheets that we see, the fenders, the hood, the back, the, all that stuff, that's copied off of the SS100. Yes. What is underneath as a chassis? The chassis, uh, this was a concept that a fellow who ran a company called Trax, T-R-A-K-S, okay. and from what I understand, he restored SS-100s, and he came up with the concept of building a frame that would accept later suspension, updated suspension, mm -hmm. and driveline. So Suffolk... Uh, the, Which is the company that made this particular replica. Yes, and they bought it, um, say, around the year 2000. Okay. Um, and they started doing them. But the, the concept of putting all Jaguar parts on the car, but updating at least till the 60s when independent suspension uh, came, came out. out. The, the, the uh, donor car for this was an S-type saloon. Okay. What, and, and this does come with uh, four disc brakes. It does. The, the front brakes uh, you can see, and those I made drums that completely cover backing plates with a drum, and all of that hides the, uh, the uh, rotor, etc., inside. And, and so that... that the, greatly increases the original look. In the front here, we, um, we, we have talked, uh, or we're going to be talking a little bit about this in your uh, uh, studio, mm -hmm. but this is, again, a creation that you made. Yes. This is as well, and this is actually uh, uh, colors that, you found on an original. Yeah, 
That is the, the correct original enamel for the badge. But I uh, was either given or purchased an old book just on the SS-100. It's a Japanese book. And it showed a photograph of the badge on the original car. Well, the chrome had worn off from being buffed. It was just a thin layer. And I love that look. Again, the mix of metals. So we've got nickel, chrome, bronze, and uh, I just put the slightest patina on it, uh, a wash of black patina, and that dimensionalizes it. And it's, again, more of the richness. All of the, the um, nameplates for Lucas uh, and, they're, and they're all over the car. They're right. on every, every and light. And I, I put in all the detail here, the black. Oh, on every single on one? On all of them. Oh, wow. I, li I like how it makes it stand out. That's right. You can see it. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. The really same thing in the center here. And it's full of those little details. Right. Okay, and now uh, out here we, we do see another um, ornament, but this is not being sold with the car. This is a little bit of a family heirloom. So right. Paul, tell us about it, that one. It... Uh, I had this brace. These are beautifully made and they are just slip fittings. You simply take this off, unscrew these, and then this will slide off. And uh, so this doesn't have to be on the car. But I thought it's perfect for a badge bar. It's, it's more attractive. It, it firms things up here. But uh, my father was in the 8th Air Force thus the wings, and B-24s were, uh, that was the plane that he worked on. <laughs> You've also put the, uh, the little, little nice touch, because you like, you like different metals, and here you got, we got, got the brass screws that are on top of each of the lights. Yep. Turn signals. It, it, you know, if it were a chrome screw originally, mm -hmm. and all of the screws are uh, for flat screwdrivers, Phillips weren't used at the time this car was made, but once you start buffing on the chrome on a brass screw, it comes off. And so, again, I like that, the richness of an extra uh, metal tossed in and then with the glass lens and that sort of thing. Can we take a look at the motor? Yes. So that is uh, 3.8 um, from this S-Type. Now, I do like your touch with the Lucas sticker on your battery. Yes. For, for, for Lucas Electrical Systems. Yes, because it's a modern battery. Uh, I got one that, uh, that was as plain as possible. I peeled all the decals off it, put a Lucas decal on it. I want it to function. Everything on this is for going long distances without trouble. And, uh, you know, and obviously the battery for, it, you know, rather than have a tar top or whatever would have been the original, I needed a battery. And okay. So I've just added the cutoff switch. Um, it's located where the originals were, but the original cars didn't have footwell boxes. The air cleaner is, is large and replaceable. It's a Napa part, and it is tubular. And uh, so I, I used the Phantom II basic design, and uh, it works really well. It's easily removed. And then... On the internet, the wonderful internet, I found this brass plaque, which uh, is from the Vokes uh, Air Filter Company. And Vokes supplied air filters for Spitfires. <laughs> well, what the hell? <laughs> and so, so I got that in Spain. I think it's a motorcycle part. But it's perfect, and I put the Napa part number on the brass tag. Before we uh, we move down the car, so you, you've uh, again for our viewers, you've got a replica car yes. of an SS100, but the suspension is modernized. You know the engine, the drivetrain, yes. um, and it's it's all from an S model yes, um, saloon. saloon, and um, you have driven this. You said coast to coast right. with you and your wife, uh, and you say at one point in another uh, article that you had that it's as, it's as fun driving this at 40 as it is at 95. Yeah. In essence, I wanted it to have what would have been excellent 1930s 
uh, performance, and it has that. So it has that. Twenty horsepower. About two hundred twenty horsepower. Uh, on the top of the hood here, you have uh, the the original SS one hundred did not come with rivets, and it, it had these in the hood, but it didn't have all these small ones here. So this is this something that you've added? Yeah, I added that for reinforcement, but it's visual only. <laughs> I like it. I, I cut, no holes were drilled. Uh, all of the rivets on the car, uh, and there are rivets that are supposed to be here. This is a reinforcement plate underneath the fender, okay. and it was riveted to the fender to keep flex from cracking the fenders. So all of those rivets were correct. But all of these I've added for the look, now, un underneath here, there are some things that we sh we need to point out, uh, and and these are some some of the pieces that you have recreated. Sure. So first of all, you, you know you have the SS Jag Jaguar emblem. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I'll point out, we were talking about this earlier, Paul, but the wings here, yeah, are different and than than um, the the original one, the, the the earlier one. They had graphics for their advertising and that was used for graphics i don't know that they ever made a badge of that um, so this was just a graphics that yeah, you can't or they copied it off of their, their graphic and then uh three-dimensionalized that and then up here you also redid these or did you take the chrome off are these they are actually metric uh, sized because okay. it w they were off a later car. Okay. They're not those wouldn't have been used on the S type. They're, they run beautifully, so I've got no complaint. The only thing I didn't like was uh, earlier SUs had a brass cap, and these are, were black plastic, and so I put a patina on them to uh, give it a bronze look. Everything I've done on this car is for is to be looked at. That's the whole point. It isn't, I'm not trying to fool anyone. I'm trying to intrigue people. You do have a, a plate here. Yeah. Have yeah. you? This is the original. This plate. is the original plate and the original number plate. And then what was, uh, what was right here? <laughs> this, I just store fuses in it. It's got a beautiful design to the cover. Right. I think it's the Pall Mall cigarette design. Okay. And a straight Pall Mall camel lucky strike will fit in that box <laughs> but uh it was my grandfather's so the other thing that that i notice on the engine compartment here as far as things that you have added yeah. is all of these flags so can you tell us about those yeah uh, uh, the flags are the countries where i've sold my sculpture and they're in the order so far as i can remember yeah uh, of where I sold. And uh, so for me, when I get under the hood, it's just a pleasant reminder of uh, how I got here in the first place. Now there's a, a, a plaque above the flags. Is that something yeah. that you added? That's my logo. Okay, so that's... Uh, and, uh, you know, depending on whether someone wants that or not, that's easily removed. There are no holes drilled for that. Did you also do the SS part right here? I did. And then I, I like these are your spare spark plugs right here. Yes. Well, that was that was a, a factor of uh, long term. Mm -hmm. Well, SSs were never done like um, MGTCs. They were never done with left hand drive. It was always right hand drive. Okay. But if you look at the center line of the car, which is the yep. hood hinge. You can lean into the center of the car. Yes. And if you think about it, the McLaren, their first sports car, was a three-seater, and the driver sat in the middle. Huh. So it's, it's been no problem. I don't even think about it being on the other side of the car. So you're six foot four, and you fit in there just fine. Sure. And if I have my large dog with me, then it looks like he's driving. And people, that's, that's great entertainment <laughs> for people in the other lane. I love metal uh, and various metals. And this car is sort of splashed with a variety. You've got, I suppose, the taillight uh, boxes are actually polished stainless, but say they were chrome. Certainly the 
the wheel nut is chrome. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, fuel tank, which I had made at Suffolk, have a fiberglass um, fuel tank. And it's not a functioning fuel tank. The fuel tank is actually under the car and move forward. So, so this is just for, 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 for just aesthetics. For okay. Yes. And the breather on this side, that would have been chrome, the cap, uh, the Aston style cap. So these are both pieces that have been recreated by you? Uh, th they were original pieces that I got with the car, okay. but I stripped the chrome off them for the loveliness of the metal. Mm. And then I made this flange and this piece to accept the cap just to give it more style. All of the rivets again In there? are added for a look. So moving on up here, you have got some hinges that you did. Yes. Okay. And then you created this beautiful luggage piece on the side, along with, again, the SS Jaguar emblem right there. Yes. Wow. And and, uh, would, would, would it originally had a piece of luggage on there, or was this your thought here? No. I've got a 2300 Alpha photograph in the winter, and the owner of that car had these on both sides. Oh. But I didn't find the photograph until after I'd completed this. There was also a 2300 Alpha when I think it was one of the featured marks at, at Pebble Beach a number of years ago now. And that fellow had one of these on either side of his car. But the thing I noticed right away is he couldn't use the doors if the cases were on. So if we're going to do actually use the car, that would get old quickly. So this is cut away this way in order to mm -hmm. clear the, uh, the door. And um, it's, there's a lot of storage for things that you must have with you. And you pick and choose where on the car you're going to put things if you're on a long trip. Yeah. Um, and then I've been able to stack things on top of it and tie it down with the tie downs that are here as well. So that's why you have the, the wooden railings on yeah. the top. Because this is your only luggage source. If you can hold this, I'll show you yep. one added item here. This is buffalo hide. Suitable for buffalo the hide. country. Okay, so there it's not beautiful on the inside, but it will shed water. Functional. And uh, it's never gotten wet in there, but I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. But it, I had uh, this made as well. And then this fits like that. Oh, look at that. So then you have a nice... Drinks, a picnic, or tools. It's really nice to be able to set something down that isn't going to get scratched. So, um, Your own picnic table. Exactly. I like the drinks. Again, we have a logo on it. <laughs> Copper rivets. Okay. Actually, Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm pretty sure I got this from the food industry. Uh, <laughs> right. The labels Up here, for the yeah. luggage, I also made those, and uh, I, I just copied. Yeah, Joseph Lucas, <laughs> and I wanted it to look as if it were something. That was supposed that were, to be there. Yes, that was av uh, available and, and put on it. This, the seven inch driving light, um, okay. is a, that's, that's a driving light, uh, originally um, a uh, Lucas flamethrower. Yes. That, and uh, I have had a, a few different lenses in it. The one that's in there right now matches the headlights really nicely. Uh, there's a kind of grayish, almost violet tone oh, to the nice. glass. It's really nice. Uh, that's that's from a Rolls-Royce headlight. And then I run an H4 bulb in it. So the only danger is it gets really hot if someone were to touch it. So when the car came, when you bought the car originally, that was not on there. That's something no, you added. The, I, I uh, uh, made the, uh, the post, that's solid stainless. Yep. Uh, again, another friend fabricator made it. It's just beautifully made. This is this area on the cowl is a compound curve. It curves in in two different directions. Okay. So it was tricky to get to that to lay that flat. Yeah. So delighted with that. This is a radot mirror. 
I'm probably saying that wrong, Rayadot, something like that. But uh, it was a, sort of an MG Mitten catalog item. That's a well-known company from the 60s. Yeah. And uh, I, was, I found one, and uh, all I did with this was add a um, LED light and a bullet. Got to have bullets. I, I, I love it. Yeah. You've also got, of course, your uh, signature plaque right there on the side. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the inside. Sure. Got, let's start with the steering wheel. Yeah. So tell us, tell us what's uh, unique about the steering wheel. Um, Suffolk offers two steering wheels. One is a uh, wood rim. They also make an all-black steering wheel, which was correct for the car. And it had this aluminum... Um, hub. Okay. They uh, just went with a a uh, an aluminum cap okay. here, which is not correct. So from photographs, I made this wheel center, and then I made the levers for the spark advance throttle and um, turn signals, <laughs> and it, it's literally a marble with a piece of wax attached. And made one mold and made three. And so I have a very accurate wheel center. And then I love period uh, wraps on steering wheels. And this is the classic bumblebee wrap. And uh, so is I, this wrapped as, so it's, it's a wrapped rope with yes. beeswax. Right. I, I bought beeswax from my neighbor who raises bees. Okay. And uh, I heated up the beeswax, put in an, uh, an adequate amount of uh, the rope and uh, soaked the wax into the rope. And then I took it out, stripped off the outside layer of wax because, you know, there's a limit to how much you want. And then I, ra I wrapped it. And the first layer is the, uh, the white, now golden. Okay. Um, and after that's completed, then you fill the gap with the black waxed okay. uh, string, okay. and that gives that that bumblebee look. Now, there's a, a story about the um, wooden handle on the dashboard. It was a kitchen knob, okay. and I made a mold of it, and then I was able to dye the resin to match. What's on the shift hold handle? That just yes. For a moment. Yes. The gear knob I found on my first visit to Arturo Keller's Pyramid Museum. But in the town nearby, they happen to have this old uh, gear knob. It's a choice piece, and so I've made something to match it. All right, can you take us through each of the levers that starts on the left side of your dash and goes this right way? Oh, right. Starting at the far left, the... Uh, the chrome-plated knob with the four balls on, that's basically a switch from the main tank to auxiliary. Okay. That's non-functioning. Here is the amp gauge. Uh, here's the fan switch for the heater. Uh, the car has a phenomenal heater in it, and so that's two speeds. The next switch is for the two driving lights. They both okay. come on at the same time. Then, obviously, this is the starter button. Yep. You, you key it first. You'll hear the pump come on. Then you hit the starter. Um, and then this is the headlights. Uh, and uh, one switch, the, the first click are the running lights. Okay. And then one more click, then the, the uh, full beam comes on, and it's also got high beams. That's the wipers. Then uh, next is the temp gauge. I put a uh, piece of red tape to delineate the point at a glance, uh, just skipping over here to the oil pressure gauge, most important. And the uh, uh, car has phenomenal oil pressure. The faces of all the gauges um, was a crusty, like on an old watch, if you look at the face, it almost looks like it's particles of aluminum. 
You know, it's okay. kind of a yep. rough surface. Yeah. I love that look. Uh, it, you know, it just says old time piece. Well, that's what uh, Jaguar used for the gauge faces. Well, I didn't like looking at these with uh, the Suffolk um, gauge face. Okay. It just wasn't convincing, not a pleasant look. So I went to ridiculous steps to have these reproduced with that uh, silver texture. And uh, these three don't have it. It's not so critical. And the original cars did not have, uh, they, they just had plain painted steel dashboards. Okay. So uh, when I got this car, the dashboard was black and, you know, a nice look. But even in the day, it wasn't, it was so easily uh, remedied. You could put a wood of your choice. And I found this out in a hardwood supply out on the East Coast. I had my woodworker um, install it and then I put the finish on. Um, but it it adds a lot of uh, flavor. Now, I don't put wipers on the car. The, the thing about this car is that the, the uh, windshield folds down. If the wiper uh, blades are on here, you have to take them off. Or you can strip the gears on the uh, mechanism under the dash. These, the original car didn't have, this is, they had these, this chain, and that is the correct look. Okay. Suffolk did these leather wraps, and I like them. They don't flap around, as, and they don't make noise. noise. The brake is very similar to what you'd, it's, you know, the same as oh, what same you'd see in... Yeah. Uh, Any other car. Yeah. Do the seats adjust forward or backwards at all, or recline? They do. The, they recline uh, manually. Right. You pull uh, bolts out, and then you can put this back. Right. And the uh, tracks work well. The, the seats are exact uh, reproductions, so far as I understand and they function really well. Wow. Yeah. I have a basket that I put on top of the tunnel underneath the heater. It fits there perfectly. It doesn't have to be attached. That's where I keep, you know, it's a glove box, sunglasses, etc. Then you've got storage behind the seats. Well, Paul, thank you so much again for just for sharing this beautiful uh, SS100 replica with us. Uh, folks, not only is it a beautiful replica, but it is a one-of-a-kind rolling piece of artwork by none other than Paul Nessa. Thanks for watching.